My mother said to me one time, she said, listen, you're appointed to live a certain amount of time and you're going to live it no matter what. Well, I believed that then. But then I read the Word of God. Right. And I learned that the Word of God told me something different than Mama told me. Let me give you just a few verses uh, before I get down to the first point. Uh, listen, Psalm, Proverbs 9, verse 11. For by me that day shall be multiplied. The years of thy life shall be increased. Wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, will increase our years with God. Listen to Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be what? Shortened. That's right. Talks about prolonging the days. That's right. Talks about the shortening of days. Listen to Ecclesiastes 7, 17. Be not overmuch wicked. Why? Be not thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? See, child of God, you can die before your time. You can go home early tonight because you refuse to submit yourself to the Word of God and the will of God. You continue to live in rebellion against God. Listen, listen to this one in Psalm 55, 23. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. Seems to me like God saying, I'm going to take some folks home early. Even the unsaved, God takes home early sometimes, or they'll die early. Uh, listen to this, young people, listen, listen to this, young people, especially the young people tonight. Especially you children, 10, 11, 4, 5, 6, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Good. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. What is that promise? Verse number three, that promise is long life. Right. Listen, that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long on the earth. A lot of the big green used to tell how. Back in his younger years, he would preach and he'd say, I'll not live to be an old man. He said, because I was a rebellious teenager, I, I was a rebellious child. I, oh, what a great man of God he was when he uh, was in his heyday. Uh, but he died somewhere around 59, 60 years of age. Uh, he didn't live as long as I have lived. Uh, uh, why? Uh, hey, the promise. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 3. Uh, now think uh, uh, about it, young man. You, you, you slip out and you take that car and you get out at night uh, against the uh, order of mom and dad, you wrap that thing around a tree somewhere, had you been home in obedience, that would not have happened. Right? Listen to young ladies, you get in those chat rooms and you begin to talk to those complete strangers and then something happens, listen, had you stayed out of there and did what was right, then you wouldn't have had that problem. I just think it's time to begin to warn folks that there is tonight, even in a believer's life, there is a penalty for sin tonight. Right. Can't rebel against God. Uh, number one tonight, uh, sometimes God kills sinners uh, or the unsaved uh, uh, prematurely. Why? They get in the way of His plans. <laughs> See, not just, not just when, I'm going to tell you in a moment when God kills a Christian. But hey, hey you, you can sit here and make fun of the preacher if you want. But if I was you, I'd live in fear. That's right. Hey, I, I live in fear of God. Hey, hey, God punishes sin tonight. Oh, I hope we leave here tonight realizing that as a child of God especially, I, I cannot continue uh, sucking on that bottle. I, I must run to the meat of the Word of God. I must answer God's call. Where is the beef? Oh, listen to Exodus. Let me just give it to you to save time. Exodus chapter 14. You remember the children of Israel has been down in Egypt 400 years? You remember how they've been redeemed? I said they've been redeemed? They've been redeemed how? By the blood of the Lamb. Hey, they come out of Egypt and they're heading for that promised land. Having been redeemed by the blood. Hey, they get up to the Red Sea. And you remember God said to Moses, what do you got in your hand? He lifts that rod. You remember the story. Waters go hither and thither. And the children of Israel walked over on dry land. Bless God, it was dry land, too. Let me give you, I may have told you this before, but I love to tell it when I think about this verse of Scripture. I was riding one night, I love to, I don't listen to a whole lot of Christian radio, but now and then of a night, you know, I get sleepy and I'll try to find something. I've run out of CDs or something, and I'll try to get some. And one night I heard this old fellow, and he's preaching in Exodus, and, well, he's sounding pretty good. 
But then he said, now I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, he said, uh, in this Bible, it said the Red Sea, R-E-D. He said, I want you to understand that really, it wasn't the Red Sea. Man, my ears perked up. He said, uh, see, he said, if you'll study, you'll find there was a Reed Sea, R-E-E-D, and uh, there's a Red Sea. Red Sea's deep, the Reed Sea's two inches, he said. He said, so see, the translators, always blame it, you know, the translators, he said, left out an E, therefore it made it the Red Sea when it should have been the Reed Sea. I got, listen, I got so excited, you say, why? Well, follow me. I got so excited, Dr. Mendez, I pulled my car over side and began to shout, bless God. You say, why? I said, that infidel tried to take the miracle out of my, out of my Bible and he made a bigger one out of it. You need to tell me that God drowned Pharaoh's army in two inches of water. That's a pretty stupid army, isn't it? That's a pretty stupid army that they turn their loaves up out of two inches of water. Don't fool with my Bible. You make a I was going to preach on it. God told him what to preach and then God changed my mind. Listen, folks. Don't fool with the Bible tonight. Oh, listen. There's the Assyrian army. 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. Listen, let me just hurry on. God killed 185,000 people. 185,000. Read it for yourself. In, in the book of Kings, in 2 Kings 19 and 35, God slew, God killed, if you would, 185,000 folks in one night. Right. See, folks, he's a God of love. But all we've got to understand, he's also a God of wrath. That's right, that's right. we got to understand, he's a God of love, but he's a God that punishes that's right. sin. Tonight. That's right. Then there's another example, old King Herod. Uh, you say, Brother Bell, you keep using Old Testament verses. Uh, well, last time I checked, it was this far too. Yeah. Last time I read Romans 15 to verse 4, it said those things are written, the fourth time we're written by our learning. That's right. That we, through patience and comfort uh, of the Scripture, might have hope. Uh, but just to satisfy you tonight, uh, I'll give you an example from the New Testament. Uh, yeah. Hey, there's a fellow by the name of King Herod uh, in chapter 12 of Acts. Uh, oh, it said, he said, it uh, said enough on a set day, had arrayed in a royal appearance, set upon his throne, and then made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of God, not of men. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten up with worms. He fell over dead. God killed him. Those are unsaved people. You say, Well, Brother Bell, you're, you're, you're talking about Christian. You said, Why? When does God kill a Christian? Well, let me give you point number two. But when does God kill a Christian? Now listen to John chapter 15. Verse number one and two tonight. I am the vine and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he pruneth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Right. See, God says when you... Christian... When you keep sucking on that bottle, when you ought to be eating the meat of the Word of God. Hey, he said, I might just do a little pruning here. I, I might even cut you off. I, I might even bring you home. I, oh, you've had 20 years to grow. I've been in churches where folks have been saved six months. Man, give me a bunch of new Christians to preach to. Right? They don't sit here and do this. Yeah. While you preach. Man, give me some new Christians. They want to do something for God. I told somebody the other day, I love, you was there years ago. We were out in, uh, at different times when we used to go to, uh, out in, 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 in New Hampshire, or Connecticut. You remember upstairs in that little church that had about 25 or 30 people. Uh, uh, that was on a good night. And a uh, small church. I, I called my wife after preaching that first night. I said, man, I can't believe what I've seen tonight. I, I'm giving an invitation. Folks came forward. They didn't just kneel and pray. They fell out on their faces. Right. I'm giving an invitation. Stepping on the people, man. So I've never seen people falling on her. I said, God, give me some new Christians. Hey, hey, hey they're not lifted up with pride to where they're so fearful of getting her, her clothes messed up a little bit. Man, they came to get in. They didn't come to get out. They came to worship, bless God, not to whine and cry and complain.